Twin Falls, Idaho, to Lee Stranahan, Derek, and he's going to lay out exactly what's going on. Lee, tonight we've had, and I couldn't get to all the callers because we had so much to do in Wisconsin, but Lee, people are already reading your reports, reading Pam Geller's material, and they're already outraged. Their heads are blowing up. Can you set the table exactly what's going on out there? Well, the last caller did a great job of setting it up. Everything you said was right. Back on June 2nd, a five-year-old girl who was born prematurely, so she's mentally disabled. She's physically and mentally like a three-year-old. She was uh, brought into a laundry room by three refugee boys, uh, Muslims, uh, as far as we can tell, uh, Muslim refugees. The authorities are being very tight-lipped about the whole thing. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the uh, two of the boys we know uh, both anally and orally penetrated her. Let, let me put it that way. And the 14-year-old videotaped the whole thing. Uh, we interviewed exclusively the father earlier this week who talked about seeing 30 seconds of that video. So this is an assault we absolutely know happened, absolutely know was videotaped according to what the father told us, right? So he, he was very definitive about that. I want to say, obviously, these are allegations, but 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 the father said he saw it, okay? So um, now... It, when, it, when you say allegations, they were rounded up by the authorities, right? I mean, there's... Absolutely. They're, they're working their way through the legal system right now. But uh, what happened was there, the, the situation, since it's happened, has been hushed up. And it's a real question for people. Why would the local authorities here, are the people, you know, is the mayor of Idaho a big, you know, Sharia supporter? And uh, that's what we're out here on the ground getting to the reality, why this has happened. And I'll talk about that in one second. But I also want to just mention that we have an exclusive coming up. Uh, the exclusive is an interview with one of the local activists. And she, one of the outrageous things that happened here, Steve, is the Obama-appointed U.S. attorney for Iowa made a statement... You mean, uh, you mean Idaho? Forgive me, Idaho, yeah. Made a statement shortly after the uh, arrest of the boys. And she said in that arrest that the spread of false information... Ready for this? This is, this is the U.S. attorney saying the spread of false information uh, may result and may violate federal law. <laughs> now... Uh, have we applied this standard to, let's say, Black Lives Matter? Has this ever been applied, that the spread of false information that might lead to threats applies, is, violates federal law? So this is why the, the Obama administration got involved in this immediately with this statement. And I interviewed, and we'll have this up uh, later tonight or tomorrow morning, an exclusive interview with an activist. Okay, okay but, here, but here's what I understand. The little girl was raped. Anally and yep. orally, right? Yep. She was also urinated on, That's right? right. It was all filmed. She was mocked and ridiculed, right? Yes. These boys have somehow got picked up authorities. But right now, the local TV media out there, the local newspapers out there, the uh, the big institution of Southern Idaho University out there, uh, the city council where people have been outraged at them, the mayor, uh, yes. the U.S. attorney, every institution out there is 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 not standing up for American citizens. Why is that, Lee Stranahan? Well, so let's let's talk about the big picture here because why is Obama? Why is everybody involved? What we're going to be reporting on this week is that there's an economic incentive out here. These refugees did not simply show up here. They are brought out here as cheap labor. And the local industries are benefiting from this cheap labor. Let me explain how it works. There's a number of food processing companies out here. And if they hire a refugee, that refugee's wages are paid in part or in full by the government. If they hire Steve Bannon, let's say, okay, which is unlikely, he may not be qualified, but if they hire Steve Bannon, right, they get no incentive. If they hire an American, there's no incentive. So who, who do you think gets the jobs, right? We have an interview coming uh, later. Hold on, hold on. Lee, Lee, you're making my head blow up, and I know we're going to get Lee here when I talk about this. Are you telling me yep. that they have imported uh, yeah. Muslim refugees from all these various countries uh, and yeah. clearly don't know how to behave because you see what they did to the little girl, have imported those up to Idaho because businesses up there get to use their labor competing against American labor and that the federal government's picking up half the labor cost? That's, that's exactly right. The government is picking up the labor cost, and then the money all spreads around. So, so, for instance, the mayor of Twin Falls is also the head 
of the local chamber of commerce. And so this has been good for business because they can get this cheap labor here in Idaho. They, it, it works very well for, for the businesses. It works very well for the mayor. And, the, you know, there's a lot of palms being greased. People have been to Turkey on a trip, right? So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. But it's obviously there's unforeseen consequences. For instance, a woman here told me since she moved here uh, in the last two years, her neighborhood is now about 33% Muslim, just in two years. And the other thing that's happened is we'll have an interview later this week with a veteran, a young man who served in Iraq, honorably discharged, he applied to one of these businesses. It's a local yogurt company called Shobani. It's owned by a Turkish national billionaire. And this vet applied at Shobani. He's got experience working a forklift, thought he'd be able to get a job, right? Didn't even get a call back, Steve. Did not get a call back. And that's an example of what is happening here. These jobs are temporary. Now, the other thing that's interesting, Steve, is that some of these jobs used to be done by Mexicans. They were done by Mexican nationals who are here legally or illegally, but let's just leave it at that, right? But there's so much political cover now for the the illegal immigrants are no longer living in the shadows. So what's happened, there's what we've learned here, Steve. They, They started asking for more money and better working conditions. And guess what? (laughs) <laughs> they got moved out. That's why they're bringing in these people from, you know, Eritrea and and Iraq and the Sudan, right? That's what's happening. And so, in other words, the conditions got too bad for the. This is almost, but, but 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 Lee, this is almost Kafkaesque. Is, is the yes. is, who who is standing up for just the hardworking citizen? Of Twin Falls, Idaho, other place around there. Who who is their voice? Who who since the city council's not listening to them, the mayor doesn't listen to them, the police don't listen to them. Uh, you know the the the, the owners out there, Chabani Yogurt and others, not listening. To them. Who in the no, local newspaper is horrible? They're writing these editorials calling these people racist. Who stands yes. up for them? Uh, well, there's a good local activist community of real patriotic Americans here. Those are the people who are getting called racist. Uh, people like Pam Geller have been great about this. Uh, Sheridan, uh, uh, the friend of mine, Sheridan Rosenberg, has been great about this issue. She's been on this issue. So there's been a few people. Claire Lopez from Center for Security Policy uh, has been very good on it. But really, you know, I'm one of the first reporters to come here on the ground and cover it. And there's stuff you can get on the ground you can't get otherwise. So obviously Breitbart is putting resources, not just me, but, you know, people like Michael Patrick Leahy, Katie McHugh. But here's the other thing, Steve. When I was up here a couple of days ago covering a press conference, do you know who else was up here? BuzzFeed. Reporter from BuzzFeed flew up from L.A. with a photographer. And that tells you something, Steve. Yeah, the left knows they got to kill this narrative or it's bad news. That, that's right. This, this narrative hits on about five Donald yeah. Trump issues. Yeah. Yeah, and and so they want if, to if, Bri- like if Breitbart if Breitbart if Breitbart and BuzzFeed are both sniffing around the same story, <laughs> two, two pretty smart organizations, right? That that's right. I got to say, our coverage will be better. But, <laughs> um, but uh, look, that really does tell you something that that the first two times national reporters get up here on the ground, it's us and BuzzFeed. Yeah. Uh, they they want to kill this narrative dead, Steve. But look, you know, we're not going to let them. We're up here. We have a lot more coming on the story, including an exclusive tomorrow, calling a local activist, calling for the U.S. attorney, Wendy Olson, to step down. Wait till you see this interview, Steve. It's, it'll, it'll knock you dead. Okay. And, Lee, uh, Lee, I'll, uh, Lee, I'm going to let you go because we're going to have you on the morning show. We're going to reach out to you and get you on the morning show. Lee Stranahan live from Twin Falls. I have fantastic work, Lee. The stories this weekend have just been amazing. Lee Stran- hey, Steve. Yep. Steve, uh, look, uh, people, other people have said this. I, I know you hate this. But thank you. Look, you have been a real champion for this, and other people have noticed it and and called you out on it. So I, I want to thank you, and so do the people here in Twin Falls. People know what you're doing, and they want to thank you for your coverage. Well, listen, it's, it's guys like you. If we didn't have guys like you, we couldn't get it done. We provide the platform. Lee Stranahan, the lead investigative reporter. When you put Julie, Julia Hahn or Lee Stranahan on something, you know, all of a sudden your world changes. And also uh, Michael Patrick Leahy.